My name is Christine Pere. I'm an independent consultant, and I'm going to tell you in a few words what I do um, and the journey that I've taken. Uh, then I'm going to uh, get into more about augmented reality, and that's going to be the focus of, of the rest of the talk. For the last five years, I've looked at enterprise and industrial augmented reality. Um, before I started in augmented reality, I was also working in emerging technologies. Uh, I've been in emerging technology since uh, 1990. And I help companies to identify new opportunities to tackle those kinds of problems that Thomas was speaking about, as well as very large companies that are sometimes looking to fill a gap, a gap in their technology portfolio to make them successful. So I tend to, to be more of a leader than a follower. So that means that what I do is I identify problems, gaps, and then I start initiatives. I do research and I try to find the people who are solving the problem or who are filling the gap. And I hunt and hunt and hunt until I, I find those, those special people. And we tend to collaborate and work together to create communities. Uh, some, something like the community that's, that's here. We're looking together to help good ideas in virtual augmented and mixed reality to get off the ground. The communities that I have started have included augmented reality in Switzerland, but that was much too early. That's a trend that I have. I'm always much too early, so uh, don't listen to me. <laughs> but um, one of the other ones that I started in 2009 was an org a community focusing on interoperability, making open augmented realities so that content could flow between different platforms. That's an example of a community. Later in 2013, I started a community focusing on enterprise augmented reality called the Area the AR for Enterprise Alliance. I'm happy to tell you more about that. It's, uh, some of the information is coming out in my talk. But then after I have a community of people, we can then begin, and I continue, and return to consulting to my clients. So this is the cycle. I identify the gaps, build communities, and then I consult about what I've learned. This framework, Milgram's Continuum for Mixed Reality, is where many of the concepts and the terms that we're speaking of today began. He described a continuum from a completely digital world to a completely physical world. And between those two points is a mixture of the digital and the physical. So augmented reality is much more physical world and augmented virtuality is much more digital world and we've put the, the real people or objects into that digital environment, that synthetic world. So I am going to be focusing way over here. The term augmented reality was not actually invented by Milgram. It was originated in Boeing by two engineers who were working on a wiring harness. And I'll come back to that in a minute. There are hundreds, I used to say thousands of use cases um, that scared people. So I'll just keep it to 100 or maybe several hundred. But the point is that these are technologies that are so broad in their utilization that I make the argument there is no one killer use case. Now other people can argue their point of view, but in my opinion, there are use cases that appeal to consumers that entertain, that provide value in their navigation or in their learning. And there are different use cases, industrial and enterprise uses. And for this reason, I spend a lot of time, and I'm going to just uh, encourage you to think of these as being quite separate and uh, to be cautious in your frameworks and your, your future investments not to try to blend these because you can see the displays that they use are quite different. Most consumers are not going to be spending a thousand francs or dollars or euros on the kinds of hardware that's necessary to make very compelling augmented reality. Most 
enterprises are willing to spend more money if they see that there's a high potential for return on investment, whereas consumers generally want things for free. So I, I can go down the list, but I think you can read them for yourselves. Some of the very, very critical barriers for enterprise augmented reality are towards the bottom. We need to have very secure systems that allow the physical world, which is highly sensitive to an enterprise, blend with that digital world. So this is a, an initiative that now I've been working on for the last six months, is security in enterprise augmented reality. Another example of a very significant barrier that we still need to overcome is around integration, and I'll come back to that as well. So within the context of enterprise, 12 is a nice round number. It's not too scary, not too small. But you can see that actually there are other industries that I'm combining. For example, architecture and construction. Many people will say, oh, but those are two different industries. Yes, but they share a common objective, and that's the built environment, to make the built environment richer. Automotive and commercial vehicle, aviation and aerospace. These are really the, the center of enterprise augmented reality today, and they have been for the last 10 years. Now, you may think, oh, that's what she's talking about, 10 years, that augmented reality hasn't been around that long. On the contrary, it, it has, and it's been in use in some of these companies in a, in a um, sandbox or controlled environment. But because they've had such a long investment in these technologies, in 2015, 16, we began to see some examples in automotive industry and, and aviation where they, they've now gone commercial and they have gone into production environments and are bringing very big results. Now, do those uh, make the headlines in your tech press? No, because they are interested in protecting their competitive advantage, not in sharing it. So there are many, many other examples in these other industries, and I'll come back to some use cases in just a minute. First, let me tell you why those industries are there and what they have in common. The first is they are very concerned with the physical world. I don't need to give you examples, but just think the word fleets. Fleets of cars, fleets of ships, fleets of airplanes. And then the second thing you can think of is linear assets. This is a term that's used in oil and gas and transportation. Linear assets are lots of things that are straight, and they're in the physical world. And there are many other things that are in the physical world. And generally, when you have a lot of things that you need to build or take care of, you have a very large workforce. Workforces are, are quite expensive. And the more you can do to optimize the performance of your workforce, the better your return on investment and your profitability in the long run. So large workforces is a very important attribute of an industry as well as a company that's going to adopt augmented reality. They tend to work on global markets. I can tell you that while Boeing sells primarily to US companies, Airbus to European, they still are sourcing their components and selling their products, operating their products on global markets. These introduce a variety of new challenges that augmented reality can really help with. And they also, at a global level, whether they are whatever industry they're in, they encounter, these industries show a high risk factor, partly because of the assets that they have, but also their geographic challenges. The, the workforces are working in quite dangerous environments. Think people blowing off their hands, going into mines. There's a lot of dangerous things that are in aerospace. So risk is a fact of life in these industries. And anything you do to reduce risk increases performance. It is a very concrete measure industries use for adopting technology. Finally, because of their risk, because of their global size, because of the, the workforce there, they are confined to a lot of regulations. This causes them to do, pay a lot of attention to certification and inspections to confirm that they comply with the regulations. Now, use cases. What do these industries do with augmented reality today? I pulled up 10. These are the top ones. But I'm going to tell you that the primary ones today that we see, there's a lot of use of augmented reality in maintenance and service. 
These are use cases in which we know that the performance can be greatly impacted by having digital information immediately. Another very important one is logistics. Moving physical things around takes a lot of time and, uh, and it's prone to error. So logistics is an area where if you can reduce the, the error by fractions of a percent, you can save a lot of money. So those are the, the most active, but all of these use case areas apply to all of the industries that I had on the screen before. In a general way, what are these industries doing today and what are the companies who are working in those industries doing? They are moving from a handheld paradigm to a hands-free. They tended to use tablets over the last five years as they've experimented because tablets have high resolution. They permit a greater field of view for the camera. There are other benefits. They're, highly, they're easily integrated into the enterprise IT system because they're already there. The use cases as a global tendency, people are realizing that they can't just take a consumer application and plant it into an enterprise environment. They have to do use cases from the ground up, solving enterprise problems, not a consumer problem. So to, to begin to deliver on my promise to give you some directions of where you might look, I mentioned that wearable displays, hands-free technologies are a very, very important coming trend. You've seen many, many examples, the HoloLens and others. But I want to tell you that what we have today far, far fails to meet the needs of users. We need a much better, lighter, uh, and more higher performing devices. And while these are, are uh, highly desirable, I think we're going to see a great explosion of wearable devices, not a consolidation, not in the next two years. We're going to see much more diversity and a lot of failure. So this is a, a sector in which you're going to have a fail-fast paradigm. Um, in general, augmented reality suffers especially in what we call the greenfield or open-ended augmented reality. If you don't have a very confined environment, we suffer greatly from uh, poor tracking uh, technologies. So these are going to improve, especially in controlled environments. There's a lot of uh, fantastic uh, work being done there. There is an alarming shortage of people trained to work in augmented reality, especially in industrial augmented reality. This is an enormous gap that's holding us back. If you're in any, any education uh, or training kind of domain, you should be introducing an augmented reality curriculum, not a VR, AR curriculum. I'm talking about an augmented reality curriculum that focuses a great deal on the physical world and the constraints and conditions in the physical world. So there's a terrific need for these people. There are programs that are emerging, never have enough. Um, something we have almost nothing of today are very local repositories of experiences. We're going to see this develop. It's going to develop as a result of drones, as a result of Internet of Things, and other technologies that are coming along that are going to converge with augmented reality and use augmented reality only as a way to visualize what's already there in the digital world. So hyper-local content uh, visualized through augmented reality. And we're just beginning to see, and we'll see a lot of experimentation in new business models, um, delivering on some promises that were made 15 years ago about experience-based business. But now I think we're going to get much, much closer to that. We're going to find some things that don't work, and perhaps we're going to find some things that work. Now, if I were investing, and I am, I invest of my time and I invest of, of my passion in this industry, this is where I think there's two slides. One is on software, one is on hardware. Why do I not have a slide on content? Because with augmented reality, content already exists. It's called the physical world and all of the digital information that's already associated with it. 
And I think that investing in content companies is going to be a higher risk and a lower return on investment. For software, I would recommend focusing on where there are already some very successful software systems and adding augmented reality to that. So not trying to start a completely new field of software, but to try to, and to be successful at bringing a new user experience to the tools that people have proven they, they need. Um, much faster, better performing 3D graphics, 3D capture, analytics, and displays. We're desperately in need of those. There's a lot of diversity in this space. And as I mentioned, uh, there's already a lot of data, especially pouring out of connected objects, and augmented reality can help us to see that. Now, we're in hardware. Optics and lenses. Now I know there's important things to be, other important things to be done, but these are um, areas that have had a relatively low speed of innovation. So we're kind of still stuck in some optics and, and lens types that were invented 10 years, 15 years ago. We're now just getting to the point where we can manufacture them at scale. We need to continue evolving and improving the kinds of optics as well as depth sensing technologies. And while people haven't really put much effort into it, if we're going to have all this eyewear or wearable devices, we're going to need a lot of accessories and things that personalize or help us to manage power or manage security. Um, and, and so accessories are actually going to be, uh, some, in some ways, bigger than the business of the wearable itself. So those are my thoughts I wanted to share with you, and I appreciate the opportunity. I uh, welcome your discussion after, during the break.